In this video, I'll be going over the practice for the Venn diagram quiz. So it says here, for most of the problems we do with sets, or two sets, the sets are overlapping. Here are some different examples on how two sets can be shown. In fact, we've already looked at these cases, but we haven't really done anything with them. And so I just don't want you to forget about them. And in solving these problems, you can't just consider overlapping sets. You've got to think about the other possibilities. So for example, on our, in our first case here where we have A is a subset or a proper subset of B. So let me go ahead and write that out. So here we have A is a proper subset of B. So in other words, A is a subset of B and it's not equal to B. So that's the definition of a proper subset. So not equal but uh, A is a subset of B. All right, so for example, if we let A be the set of sophomores at Brookhaven and B be the set of all students at Brookhaven, you can see that every sophomore, or everybody that's in the sophomore set is in the set of all students. And so A is a subset of B here. In the next case here, we have A and B are disjoint, which means they're sets that have nothing in common. So I gave you the example below, you can see right here, where A is the set of even numbers and B is a set of odd numbers. And of course, they have nothing in common. In the even numbers, you got 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. In the odd numbers, you have 1, 3, 5, and so on. They're disjoint these two sets have nothing in common. And then finally, probably the least interesting uh, relationship is when sets A and B are equal. So for example, I've just basically indicated the vowels of the alphabet two different ways. So set A is, or set B in this case, actually I got it kind of backwards, it doesn't really matter here, but they're the same. The set of vowels in A, E, I, O, and U they're the same set. All right, so now it's your turn. I want you to see if you can name, uh, well, go ahead and do problems one, two, and three, where you're gonna give an example of disjoint sets, equal sets, and a case where you have a proper subset. All right, so let's see how you did. I'm assuming you stopped the video here. Okay, so for example, now it's not very likely that we have the same sets. But an example of disjoint sets, I think I gave this one previously, is A is a set of cats and B is a set of dogs. And these two sets have nothing in common. Again, there are no cat dogs, there are no dog cats. And so these are disjoint sets. In number two, if I want two sets that are equal, how about the natural numbers from one to 10? Remember the natural numbers are just the counting numbers one, two, three, four, and so on. And then how about the integers between zero and 11? Now integers include the negatives. So negative one, negative two, negative three, it includes zero, and then all the positive natural numbers. And so this is another way to name the same set of numbers. And so these are two equal sets. Um, number three, name two sets in which A is a proper subset of B. So basically, I need every element of A to also be an element of B, but I can't have the two sets be equal. All right, well, here's an example. If I say A is the set of students getting an A in this course, and B is the set of students in this course, well, unfortunately, not everybody is getting an A, and so A, set A is not equal to set B, but you can see that A would be a subset of B. Everybody that's getting an A is a person that's in the course, and these two sets are not equal. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So here it says, of 120 high school seniors, 80 play sports, and 30 are in the band. Answer the following questions and draw a Venn diagram to support your answer. And notice it says answer using complete sentences. And so when you take your, 
quiz, you want to make sure that you're using complete sentences. I don't remember the directions, but um, I'll try to make sure that it has that on there. All right, so it says, what is the least number of students who could be playing sports and it should say and be in the band, uh, who could be playing sports and yeah, it should say be in the band. All right, so let me go ahead and give you a diagram here. You got your sports circle and your band circle and I'm showing overlap here, but we're not necessarily going to have overlap. We, remember, we have a number of cases. We have proper subset, we have disjoint sets. So there's a number of cases we could have here. So we know that there are 80 that play sports and there's 30 that are in the band. Now, we just don't know how many are in here. You know, how many play sports and are in the band. It says, what's the least number of students who could be playing sports uh, and be in the band? Well, the thing is, isn't it possible that there's nobody in this area in here? I mean, that would be the least number that we could get. That would put all 80 of our sports people in here and all 30 of our band people in here. Now keep in mind there's 120 students, so this only accounts for 110. So 110 from 120, there must be 10 that are out here. These guys don't play sports and they're not in the band. And so it says, what's the least number of students who could be playing sports and be in the band? That would be zero. And so that's our case where the two sets are disjoint. There's 80 in sports, 30 in band, and 10 out here. And so this is the way we would draw the diagram. And then our answer here would be zero. But again, we want to use complete sentences here. And so I would write it some, something like this. The least number of students who could be playing sports and be in the band is zero. All right, let's look at B. What is the greatest number of students who could be playing sports and are in the band? So they're both. So let me go ahead and start with the same diagram. I want to know what's the most number of people I could have in here. Well, think about it. I mean, you could kind of play with the numbers. Um, you can try, we, be, you know, when we were doing part A, we had nothing in the middle. In this case, you know, if you think about it, couldn't all of the band people be playing sports? There's nothing that says that can't be the case. So there's, whoops, so there's 30 in here. Could you ever have more than that? Well, that's as many as we have in the band, so there's no way we could have 30 that are doing sports and are in the band, since there's only 30 in the band. So in this case, all 30 of our band people are playing sports, and so a, there's a better way to draw this diagram. Now, if we did it the way we have it currently, we'd have, let's see, we have 80 in sports, but there's already 30 in there, so that would be 50 here. There's nobody in this region here because everybody in the band is playing sports. So there's a total of 80 so far out of 120 total high school students. That means there's 40 out here. But again, we wouldn't normally uh, draw the diagram this way because there's nobody in here. This is a case where we have a proper subset. So I would draw it this way where my uh, smaller um, set is the band people and they're inside the group that's in sports. We know there's 30 in the band. These are the guys that are in sports and band. That means there's 50 that are just in sports, and of course there's 40 outside of there. And so in this case, the answer would be 30. The greatest number of students who could play sports and be in the band is 30. All right, let's move on to the last page here. What's the greatest number of students who could be doing neither? Well, I'm going to go back to what we were just looking at. Let me change colors here. 
So you'll notice when there was nobody that was doing band and sports, we had 10 people that were doing neither. When all 30 of our band people were also sports people, we had 40 out there. And so it looks, I mean, these are our two extremes. You could play around with the numbers and you could put one or two, uh, as many as you want in here, up to 30, you know, that are in both sports. So they'd be in the middle here in both circles. Um, but no matter what you do, are you ever going to have more than 40 uh, that are not playing sports or in the band? And so our answer, let me go ahead and get back to where we were is going to be the same, or we're going to have the same diagram that we had on the last one, where we had 40 that are doing neither. That's going to be our maximum number of students, or greatest number of students who could be doing neither. And so I would put it something like this. Um, the greatest number of students who could be in neither sports nor band is 40. All right, let's look at this last problem here. It says, uh, suppose it is your birthday weekend and you want to do three activities. See the latest blockbuster movie, play putt-putt golf, and eat at your favorite pizza restaurant. Sounds like a nice party. You have the following groups of friends. Which groups do you invite? Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a diagram with three circles. I've got a circle for my movie people, my putt-putt golf people, and my pizza people. So here's our possibilities. The group of friends, so who do we want to invite? The group of friends that do not want to do the same things that you want to do. Well, that's not cool. Um, the group of friends that only want to do one of the things you want to do. Well, that's better, but I think I can do better than that. The group of friends that only want to do two of the things that you want to do. Okay, well, we're making progress here. And then finally, the group of friends that want to do all of the same things that you want to do. Well, that seems kind of like the obvious choice here because I want to enjoy my birthday party. I want everybody participating. I want them to be all in and celebrating my special day. And so that seems to be the obvious choice here. Now, I do want to mention when you take the quiz, the problem is a similar type of problem, but I would say it's not as obvious. So just make sure you take it a little slower and, uh, and think it through. And, but it'll be similar to this type of problem. But anyway, our answer here, I would say, I want to spend my birthday weekend with friends who want to do the same things I want to do or I should say, want to do all the same things that I want to do. All right, so make sure you understand uh, the answers to the quiz, practice quiz here. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can email me or give me a call or text me at my number. Um, otherwise, you're ready to go on and take the, the test. I'll post that soon if it's not already up. And that's it for this video.